Is that the man himself over there? It's me. How you doing, Paulie? So, you ready to go? I'm game. Thanks for being on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Wipe this thing off. Hi, Mark. Hey, what's happening? Wow. Look at you. <laughs> it's me. There isn't a, even a PRS behind you. I can see it. You I got, know. My, I... my pedals are right behind me. Nice. Perfect. Can you see me? Yeah. Oh, great. We should, I mean, I've got a pedal thing. Just You got it on a rack. I got it on a shelf. It looks exactly the same. Well, I'm, I'm currently, I need to add more shelves. That's how bad it's gotten. I've, I'm out, of, I'm out so, of space. I understand. Yeah. That's, I guess maybe I'll do that later today. I don't know. Well, thanks for being on. Is your family safe? Sure, man. Yeah, we're doing well. Thank you. Yeah, we're okay, too. Good. Um, Good. So, listen, I got some questions for you, and you got some questions for me, and I appreciate you being on. Sure, um, man. We just had Mark Tremonti on. It was a hoot. So we oh, should have some fun. Oh, great. Um, what's the best thing about playing in a, in a large band and the best thing about playing in a smaller band? And when it comes to band, how big is too big? You know, some people love trios. Some people like really big bands. I know Gary Granger likes having a huge amount of musicians on stage where it's all intertwined. But I got a chance to play three-piece the other day. Oh, my God, what fun. Yeah. Space. Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. I, it's, it's same for me. I mean, like in a big band, I like having my lane, my spot, my specific uh -huh. slot defined, you uh -huh. know? Um, I enjoy that part of the creative process. On the other hand, with a trio, uh, I love, like you said, I love the space. I love being able to, I love the flexibility. I love just sonically the way things can kind of breathe and um, there's just more room for a different kind of expression. Uh, but I, I like both. And I think I've hopefully practiced enough to where I can kind of fit in either scenario comfortably. So after um, how many people do you get un uncomfortable? Well, I mean, snarky, for example, usually there's about nine or so on stage, nine or 10, and that's fine. I, I think what it is is when it's like so many that, you know what? I don't even know if it's a number. I think it's more of just like what is being played. That's right. It's a maturity about it. Or what you can hear or not hear. And that could happen with three people if it's I, not the right three people. I agree. Um, so I don't know if it's necessarily a number. I think it just has to do with just the, what's going on in that particular musical situation is what's going to make me feel uncomfortable or not. <laughs> some guitar players leave the other guitar player's space and some guitar players walk on the other guitar players. Yeah. And you've got four people and they're walking on each other. It's awful. You have nine people. And everybody's being patient. It's great. Yeah. I'm generally one of those guys. If there's a big jam with lots of guitar players, like, I'm just, you point when you need me to do something, yeah, but otherwise, besides that, I'm just, I'm happy here. Okay, just rhythm. So. So in this whole shutdown period, in this whole period of time, what's the one activity you're missing the most right now, Mark? I'm playing live. Oh, I mean, yeah, I, I miss, I miss that loud on stage interaction in front of an audience greatly. <laughs> so that's it. Yeah. What about you? <laughs> uh, I have been studying so much, studying amplifier circuits, studying guitar stuff, studying uh, what I need to do to make my employees safe. I haven't, nice. I haven't even thought about missing anything. Sure. Uh, so if you weren't a musician, what would you do for a living, Mark? Well, I, oh man, I don't know. It, that, that's changed a lot since I graduated college because I, I thought it, I was going to work in advertising and marketing, which I think would still be a lot of fun. You'd be good at uh, it. I thought, I thought, yeah, I thought about Thanks. I thought about it. That, that would be cool. But I also, I think now since I'm inside a lot, I think it would be nice to have some kind of a gig that brought me outside. Um, like, you can go know, fishing like, with a mask on. Yeah. I don't know how to fish. I, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a city guy, man, but like, I don't know. I thought it'd be fun to like work for a, like a park service or something where I can be outside and be in nature a lot. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that dealing be... with the public is very interesting. Well, that's true. But maybe I wouldn't do that. Maybe I would just like, you know, make sure that the, 
salamanders were safe or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. All right, so music is in your bones. I know that from being around you. So what role is music in your life right now and how different it is from normal? I, I, you don't live a normal life anyway. It's not normal. But sure. how, you're, it's not normal. And, and where's music right now? Are you writing a lot? I'm, I'm attempting to. Yeah, I've been writing a lot and I've been doing a lot of kind of educational stuff, clinics, things like that, mm -hmm. just doing a lot of sharing lessons. Uh, but I do have some creative projects I want to I want to really dig into and, and kind of use this time of, of not traveling a lot to just get in my cave here and write some new music. I have a and cave. I've been practicing more, which is you weird. can see I'm in a man cave, too. So it's a nice cave. I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So you have questions for me. I have a couple. Well, I, well, I, was gonna... I, I, I insisted. I didn't want to hear them ahead of time. I like react. Okay. Well, I don't know if they're going to be that crazy, but I was going to ask you if you, if you weren't building guitars for a living, what would be your, your passion job? I wanted to go to scripts. I wanted to become an oceanographer. I could be one of really? those people running uh, that whale boat. Uh, what is it? Uh, the way they, they stop. Uh, oh, the like the whaling. Yeah, the Sea Shepherd stuff. Just stand in front of the spear gun like this and hope they don't, <laughs> no, hope no, no. they miss. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's cool. No, I, I, for whatever reason, if I wasn't making guitars, I'd be repairing them. And if I wasn't repairing them, I, I would have a shop of some sort. When I go to these craft shows, I could have been the guy in one of those tents at a craft show when you're walking up and down the street, you know? Mm -hmm. Um showing my wares to everybody it's just been i've always made things if i wasn't allowed to have a pa so i built one i wasn't allowed to have a bass amp so i built one i wasn't allowed to have a guitar so i built one that, i mean i did it because i wasn't allowed in the club and then well you're not gonna stop me i'm gonna make them that's how you do it man yeah um okay the other question i was gonna ask i know you're a scotch guy if you could tell us a little bit about your favorite Oh, wait, we can't talk about this? Y'all didn't I'm, tell I'm, me we... I'm going to talk about it. It's so, they didn't give me any not, rules. I, there are no rules. Okay, well, if you can, tell us your favorite distillery, where it's from. No, I like Octomore. Octomore is, is, is I don't know how to pronounce it, Brutlodix or something. Uh, uh, Brutlodix. Yeah, they're expensive stuff. Okay, now, well, either way. At one point, John Mayer gave me a bottle of 37-year-old Lagavulin. Oh, my God, oh. you're good. Oh, wow. oh, so good. I really like the, the cheap one that's closest to Octomore is Peat Monster. Um, Ardbeg is thought of as being really good. Um, I don't know. I like really peaty, smoky, wonderfully complex scotches that hit your bloodstream in 45 minutes and piss <laughs> off your wife. <laughs> All right. That's well, you know, they don't like to smell. <laughs> Perfect answer. Okay, good. Uh, all right, last question. Um, we've all seen pictures of you from the 70s, and the 80s. Um, How did you get those curls so luscious and tight? Okay, if you think I put curlers in, you're out of here. No, your I'm not. I just no, no, asked no, 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 no. They're going to go here. If you I, have a, go I, mean, here. I have a specific pomade that I use on occasion, uh -huh. but you had the whole. No, no, I had naturally curly hair. Okay. And the problem was when it went gray, the gray was straight. And the and the and the curls were curly, so I had this Hasidic Jew kind of curls coming down my head with these white lines wow. sticking out like COVID. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I looked unbelievable. And finally, I started going bald, so I cut it. I'm done. Okay. All right. I just cut it off. And I was in the booth at Nam, and this woman from Guitar Player walks up. She goes, "Where's Paul?" I said, "Right here." I said, "She goes, no, no, no. Where's Paul?" I said, wow. right here, I'm talking her ear. She looks over, she goes, ah! <laughs> she couldn't believe I cut it off. I love it. That's all I got for you. I don't know. I think that's enough. Hey, so, Mark, thanks for being on. Uh, it's my pleasure, uh, Paul. Wonderful musician, wonderful. Thanks. Um, thanks. All right, see you later. Bye, guys. Bye.